Welcome back to the Keaton Knife Shop. Today, we're going to be making a leather sheath. Now, I want to be clear that this is not an instructional video. I do not know what I'm doing when it comes to leather work, and I'm going to be learning along the way here. So this is the first sheath that I have ever made out of leather. We're going to be making a pouch sheath, and that's the type of sheath that folds over the knife. So you're using one piece of leather, you'll fold it over the knife, and then you'll fold the top tab down as a belt loop. The template we will be using I drew up in DraftSite, which is a free CAD program, but you can also do this on a piece of paper. You can take your knife, lay it out on a piece of paper, trace the outline of the knife, and then roll it to the spine, and over on the other side, trace that outline, and then you can draw a center line down the center, and you can make this template on a piece of paper with a pencil. So here you see me tracing out the template onto the piece of leather, which I got off Amazon, by the way, it's an imported leather it's uh, labeled as 12 by 12 tooling leather. I'm tracing it out with a ballpoint pen. I later learned that a ballpoint pen is not the appropriate option for tracing out your leather sheaths. Utilize a number two pencil or a leather working awl, which is uh, it's like a just a pointy needle almost. And you can scrape it out of the leather and give yourself a nice line to cut to. I've also heard that if you will be dyeing a sheath, you can utilize a red pen and the dye will mask over the red very nicely and you won't see the red pin marks. I can say though that I have never tried this so don't hold me to that. After you have your template nice and drawn out, go ahead and cut it out with a sharp knife or a razor. Take great care during this step to make straight parallel square lines. If you cut it at an angle, I found it very difficult to clean that up afterwards. Then I marked the center line of the sheath, cut out uh, the welt from my template, and lay it on the inside of the sheath so I can go and mark this welt out. By marking the welt out, it kind of gives me a place to, to glue to in the future. It will help me prevent getting glue into the body of the sheath and getting any other type of liquids like water or finishes into the glue line before gluing and that would prevent the glue from sticking. Now we're gonna be cutting that welt out. So uh, lay out the welt on the piece of leather and cut it out with a razor blade. Make sure that you leave a significant amount of meat or extra leather on the outside of the welt so that when we're fitting the welt into the pouch sheath, you, can, uh, you don't have to be as precise. You can fit it in with a little extra and then cut it off later. And there you can see what I mean. The next thing I tried to do is I tried to scave down the belt loop portion so that it would fit more snugly with the back end of the sheath. I had a hard time doing this, the knife was dull, it just didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. I then moved on to a tool that I don't know the name of, but it's not a groover, it's more of like an indenter. It created an indented line, and this is going to be the border to my tooling. So it didn't really cut it, it just kind of indented a line all the way around the sheath. You can see that my line wasn't really that good either. So I just took some random stamps, because I don't know what the hell I'm doing with stamps, and I just started stamping one after the other until I made an alternating pattern all the way around the sheath. And you can see that process here. It's not terribly pretty. I hope to one day understand uh, the appropriate tooling for sheaths, but this is getting the job done for now. I then took that same indenter and I indented a stitch line. Along the stitch line, I used a pricking iron to prick some holes along the line. So this thing's kind of a pain, to be honest. I, this, you know, it went in really deep and it was hard to take all the way out. So in reality, what I ended up doing is I ended up drilling these holes, but I tried out the, st uh, the pricking iron at first. And then I took the legitimate groover and I created a groove along the stitching line. And that groove is so that the stitches will sit below the face of the, uh, the sheath. And then right here, I slipped. And I slipped and I damaged, a, it made a big gash and damaged some of the tooling. So in order to fix that, I tried to hide it with more tooling which didn't really work very well, but this is my first sheath. There's going to be mistakes, so I'm just going to take it in stride. You know, the sheath will still be mechanically sound. It'll just be ugly. So the next thing I did is I grooved out some lines along the center of the sheath. This is in an attempt to help the sheath fold when you're folding it around the knife by taking out a little bit of that leather. In order to do this operation, I utilized a ruler and a grooving tool. I made three deep grooves right next to each other. And then I moved on to some dyeing. I used an alcohol-based dye, which I later found out the oil-based dyes are way better. 
and I wasn't very artistic with the way that I'm applying this dye. Uh, I've heard that you're supposed to apply the dye in circular motions and I just kind of threw it on there. So I did the inside first and then I did the outside as you can see here. And I also got the edges. And then bang, this is the end result. I'm skipping way forward because everything you see after this point in time is going to be me working on sheath number two. When I tried the wet fit sheet number one with the knife, I was too aggressive. I pushed too hard. The sheath was wet and the knife came right through the back. Very dangerous. Don't want to do it again. But this is why everything you see from now on will be sheath number two. And to make it seamless, I tooled the second sheath the same way. So we're right back to where we were. So what I did was I glued down this belt loop with some contact cement and now I'm taking a pricking iron and I'm laying out where my holes are going to be. I'm using the iron as a spacer. I'm not actually going to prick through this. I'm going to be utilizing a drill press to make these holes. A fun fact that I didn't know is that you do not need to let the contact cement rest all night with clamps. You can just contact cement the two joints and then tap it with a hammer and it will set. I did not know that so I had let this set overnight. So now that we've got the holes lined out, I'm going to move on to the drill press and we're going to get these holes drilled out. So utilizing the drill press, I'm following the same pattern that I made with the pricking iron. In the future, instead of using a drill press, I'm going to try out a finishing nail or an awl needle and put it into the pre drill press and instead of turning it on, just using the power of the, the press to push through the sheath. After I made the holes, I took the groover, made sure to groove down both sides of the holes and then I did a saddle stitch through these holes to affix the belt loop to the back of the sheath. This is the first time I've ever done one of these type of stitches so it was a learning experience in itself. I then tied a square knot on the back and then tried to burn this knot and beat it down which didn't turn out too hot, it didn't look pretty. In the future off of some excellent advice I got on blade forms I will try using a solder, uh, soldering iron to heat up these little tips and melt them into the holes. So you can see I heated it up and then I beat it and it just made it look like a big blob there on the, on the back of the belt loop. And then I moved back on to the contact cement. I applied some contact cement to the inside of the sheath where the welt will sit and then some contact cement to the outside of the welt. Put the two together tapped it with a hammer and then clamped it up and left it overnight. Once again, you don't need to clamp this overnight. I could have kept on going that day. Didn't know. I'm still learning. I haven't used contact cement until like uh, since like grade school. So, you know, it's been a long time since I used this stuff. I then go ahead and wet the inside of the sheath to make it easier to fold again. And then took some more contact cement and started applying it to the other side of the weld. And once again, I did the same thing. I folded it together, which this is actually a very precarious operation. You want to try to make sure you keep everything lined up. To, to make it easier, which I learned later, is that the portion that I'm gluing right there, you can actually make a little beefier, a little longer, a little oversized, so that when you fold it, uh, you don't have to be as careful with lining it up, and then you can just cut away the excess later. I'll try that on the next one. After you get it folded up and contact cemented, I went over to the drill press and drilled out a bunch of holes again. Like I said, next time I'm going to use a drill press as just a press without any drilling and I'm going to press these holes through with a big ass needle. Hopefully that's going to work better. From what I understand, using the needle method doesn't take any material away from the sheath and it actually makes the stitch stronger as the leather conforms around the stitches and kind of like squeezes the stitches. Um, I don't know if there's any truth to that, but I think that's accurate. And then I grooved out those holes and then did a saddle stitch along the entire length of the sheath. I also, from experimentation, found out that the right thread size is around nine times as much of a, of a, of a threaded section you have. So I just multiply however long the, the holes are by nine. I then moved on to the belt sander. I went straight to a 60 grit belt and then eventually to a 220. Um, I heard you can stop at 120. Also, on the belt selection, make sure you're using a nice, fresh belt that has not utilized or been used on metal. If you use a belt that's been used on metal, you can get really nasty, dirty marks all over your nice uh, leather there. After you have it nice and smooth, all three pieces of the welt together, you can take your beveler and knock off the edge around the, the grinds you just made. 
and you take your knife, uh, this case it was the old timer that I made in the last video, then wrap it up in cling paper. This is in an effort to keep that knife dry while you're wet fitting because in this case the knife would rust if it got wet. I wrap it up in the cling wrap and then I also wrapped it up with a little bit of masking tape to, to make it a little more robust and it, so it wouldn't poke through the cling wrap there. I then wet the sheath in water, warm water. I probably got a little too aggressive with this, maybe made it a little too wet, but it worked out pretty good. I then took the knife and inserted the knife carefully into the sheath uh, so that it wouldn't come out of the other side like I did the first time. Once I got it in there, I used my thumbs to press around the knife and kind of form fit the sheath to the knife. To the knife. Once that's done, I put a belt in there to kind of have the belt loop uh, dry around the belt so it's the right uh, width and size. And then that's pretty much a wrap. You know, you take the knife out, uh, you make sure it fits all good, take the cling wrap off. Oh, one step I forgot is the next thing you do is you take a little bit of dye and you match the edge of the knife to the rest of the body of the knife. So while the dye is still wet, you take your burnisher, which is just a piece of wood or a piece of plastic, and you burnish that edge behind the die. And what that burnishing does is it makes the edge nice and slick and it, it kind of closes up all those fibers, I'm guessing, and it makes it a little more water resistant and a little more tough. One thing you can notice here is that all three layers are not even on my sheath. It's because I gouged into it when I was trying to cut it all straight with each other. So that's the thing I'm gonna try not to do on the next sheath. I then use a little Neat's Foot oil. So I oil the whole sheath with, with that made it real nice and and that's it you know the the knife fit in there really well uh, I will say that this sheet is not the right design for this type of knife this type of knife in my opinion needs a welt along the along the clip uh, I realized that the first time when I punctured the back of the sheath and then even with this sheath if you're not holding it just right putting it in uh, it sometimes it kind of fights you to get in and it may cut into the sheath a little bit so at the end of the day I'll probably end up making another sheath for this knife but this was just the first time I ever made a pouch sheath and I wanted to get it all the way to completion. So anyway, that's a wrap. You know, if you like videos like this, you like knife making videos, you like tutorials and things of that nature, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and I'll have more fun content coming at you in the future. Until then, I'll catch you guys on the flip side.